First World Order Radio, finally, finally, we are on the air. No doubt. All right, all right. There's always going to be somebody in the building on First World Order Radio. We get on into some of that order consciousness tonight. First World Order Radio every Wednesday, 8 p.m. We got to talk about what is taking place on the planet. There's always going to be somebody in the building on First World Order Radio. First, we need to let you know we're going to be doing more shows, giving out more information on Wednesdays. Wednesday is 8 o'clock. We are now going to make this is the hottest day of the week. Proceeding in others in time, order, and importance. The most prominent parts, voices, or instruments. Earthly state of human concerns in existence. An indefinite multitude, quantity, or distance. System regulates to bring about specifics in the group based on value and natural characteristics. Current radiates electromagnetistics of sound through the air, same as your thoughts transmits it. Proceed in others in time, order, importance. The most prominent parts, voices, or instruments. Earthly state of human concerns in existence. An indefinite multitude, quantity, or distance. System regulates to bring about specifics in the group based on value and natural characteristics. Current radiates electromagnetistics of sound through the air, same as your thoughts transmits it. You need to understand how magical this, uh, something like this every Wednesday can become. So you need to start uh, getting your calendar right, get your schedule, your schedule right. You need to know our intention straight out. All right, so, I mean, these clues are given throughout the various languages was to piece the puzzle of this ancient history school back together again. And what we plan on doing, both of us, is bringing y'all some surefire dynamite. We're going to take this level up a notch. We're going to have stuff to do here. This is not just going to be about philosophies and theories and shit that works. Biggs back again with FWO, First World Order Radio. We back once again. I'm getting ready to bring on my co-host, Brother L. Are you here? Peace and, lo- uh, peace and love, God. How you doing? I'm doing good, God. How are you today? Uh, I'm doing okay. I do. All right, all right. That's what I'm talking about. We got a fantastic show. We got Brother Ampu and Brother Jew. Um, the priesthood is um, basically coming on for the first time. So this is their premiere, um, you know, appearance. You know, as we would say, and so I'm getting ready to bring on um, Brother Ampu right now. He's a master astrologer, um, as well as also um, a brother in which that is um, dear to my heart because, um, you know, um, we basically met almost 10 years ago, you know. Mm-hmm. And, um, we got into this, you know, I got him into some of this information. Um, at the time, he was a truck driver, and uh, now, you know, look at him. You know what I'm saying? He 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 doing he doing world tours. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, right. the, the brother who kept it going and, um, you know, is strong in the um, information. And tonight is called Spiritual Warfare um, of the 21st Century. Um, brother Ampo, are you here? Yeah, I'm here. Peace, peace to God. Can you hear me? God, peace, God. Yeah, peace, doing God. Hey, peace, brother. I'm, I'm doing, I'm, I'm excellent. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm excellent. I feel like I got minister on the phone with me. Mr. Drew, you still here? Hey, yeah, I'm here, man. What's happening, man? Peace, brother. How you doing tonight? I'm doing great, man. How about yourself, brother? Doing well, doing well. What y'all got for us tonight, I know y'all getting ready to go in. It's called spiritual warfare in the 21st century. We are in the 21st century. What's going on with this spiritual warfare? Um, How are we being attacked and what we need to do in order to um help um, rid ourselves from um these particular attacks? Yeah, for sure, man. I, I open up and I get out the way, man, because this, 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 I call him the prime minister has been on fire, really. Uh, first off, you know, like you say, I, um, you know, first let me thank you for the opportunity uh, for being able to, you know, coming on and being able to share. And just thank you again, as I always do when we cross paths, um, for being the one who was very instrumental um, into my um, development of consciousness. We have many teachers along the way. Um, and as you know, like you said, I, I was a truck driver traveling with a brother uh, who by the name of Aleem as well, and he was hitting me with all these books and all this information. 
And I could I remember he gave me more than dogma, man. I couldn't even read it. Like, what the hell is this? You know what I'm saying? I couldn't even decipher the words that Pike was mm-hmm. using. But I mm-hmm. favor to come back to devour that stuff. Um, and we stopped in Fayetteville, and, you know, you gave me a reading. Um, and, and gave me the Washington information. I was like, well, it's funny because my family's from North Carolina, but they migrated to Louisiana, like the Drew Ali family did and everything, and then, you know, start finding out that we hold, we own land in Tensaw Parish, and Sun Oil Company, which is Sunoco, actually bought our family out. Somebody mm. sold it, you know what I'm saying? Wow. But we had actual oil in, in Tensaw Parish in Louisiana, so that, that becomes from my maternal side. Of the family, but had I not met you, I wouldn't, wouldn't have made me think Louisiana and go look into my heritage. And then the first DVD I ever got was called The Great Meeting, and, and that was a direct spawn off of meeting you. And you had all these DVDs in your store and everything. And you know, it's just, you know, ever since then, you know, I've just been, you know, um, following me, which is, is just my path and the most high. Um, but yeah, it's been, you know, spiritual warfare in the 21st century. Um, is you know it, it's it's a it's a real dynamic and my, my thing is I'm not I'm not big on really talking about the problem and shit I I, I like focusing on uh, what can we do to to get busy down here like I, I'm you know astrology is my lane but I got a different twist with astrology some may come behind me and call it witchcraft I've heard that before and you can yeah. be that you can call it whatever you want to call it but come on man we we got to get to a point where we got to get past them. Jupiter's in Cancer. What the fucking do Jupiter's in Cancer? Mm-hmm. Like, what, what can you do with Jupiter in Cancer? And it's all good that you can actually uh, make this stuff personal. That's what you're supposed to do, take care of itself. But at the end of the day, we got to have an actual collective agenda where you can actually call upon um, your ancestors that you say you believe in, God who you say you believe in, collectively making one collect call to them to bring about the dynamic change that needs to take place. So as we always say, you always talk in peace, love, and light because you ain't got that in this reality. We live in a, You can get that when exactly. you call time out and say, yeah, mm-hmm. I'm going to go in my meditation room for 30 minutes. You can get that then, but I'm talking about as the norm of society, you do not live in a peace, love, and light society. That's something that you got to strive for. So then we like to look at why you got to strive for that. Well, because you got somebody that's in opposition to that. Okay, cool. If we can understand we got somebody in opposition to that and we can all agree to that, that means we're at warfare. Let's just keep it 100. We're mm-hmm. at war, period, across the board. The reason that we're scrambling for these ancient sciences, whether you're getting into Islam, whether you want know, uh, RBG, the reason you have to go and you have to go look for this because somewhere along the line, you lost that, and it wasn't necessarily passed on you from your parents. Now, some of us was lucky enough, fortunate enough, to have a parent that can pass us some science. But for the most part, the norm is we did not get these sciences passed on to us. We had to go back as a result of getting that ass whooped in physical wars before. Mm-hmm. Let's just keep it real for what it is. Right. The, Moors, the Moors, we succeeded on certain lands, and the Barbary Wars kicked off and shit, and things separated. You lose certain battles in certain wars, but you may not have lost the overall war. So our whole thing is let's just keep it in the context of warfare. So when you want to get into planets, the way I look at it is I always like to go with who controls time because you are here today. And see, my thesis really is, for real, for real, Arlene, all black organizations today, the leadership Current Moors that's leading these organizations, if you got a blog talk radio show, if you do any lectures and you got an organization, I'm saying that y'all are afraid of the white man. I'm, I'm, I'm going to be clear about that shit because I'm going to make a campaign on it. It's time to just call it for what it is. All you right. are horribly afraid of the white man, and guess what? I ain't got no problem because I admitted it on one of my DVDs called The Cosmic Art of War because I said that I know that in this level of a fight, that usually he has sent somebody over with some iron shackles called handcuffs and pistols and batons, and they'll put you, beat you, put you away, you know what I'm saying? And if you ain't going to start a Shakur nigga, then I'm, I don't want to fight him by myself either. But I'm saying once you develop the mentality, let's just say, uh, uh, of, 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 a, of a believer in God, when you look at the psychology of somebody in the Middle East, who come outside with flip-flops on throwing rocks at tanks. Look at that shit. Like, they come outside and throw, throw rocks at tanks with flip-flops on. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? 
Like the psychology That's is right. totally different. And don't nobody want to get shot today. Ain't nobody thinking about, you know what, it's only one motherfucker on the pistol. Let's all rush him because he ain't going to be able to pop everybody. He's going to pop somebody, but he ain't going to pop all of them. And let's take the gun. And what he meant, like nobody's thinking that shot of a ran type of mindset. So my whole thing is we don't want to talk about, well, we like to say, well, it isn't time for us to do that because we'd be doing that. And my argument is, listen, you don't know nothing about Tom. Because a lot of these cats that, that we're talking about leadership and what's good for the people, see, one of the problems is the people need a political voice. And that's real talk. Everybody that listens to all these radio shows that support all of this, you know, they actually deserve to have a moment where they can put a panel of speakers together who they support. And, and ain't nobody doing no presentation and allow the people to ask questions, because why ain't nobody talking a national agenda at this point, but yet you're walking around with pyramids and squares and compasses all over you, and you got all this goddamn science, but you ain't bringing this shit back where it's going to make a national type of change for the people at large in one momentum sweep. And I know it can be done, and we're afraid of that, and you talk about it's not time, it's because you don't know what time is. But let's just keep it real, because you're not an astrologer. And I'm not knocking you for that. But see, it comes a point in time, and I always like to use this diagram of the fellow craft degree in Freemasonry, mm-hmm. where they got to study the seven liberal arts and sciences when they go up the winding staircase, the three to five and the seven, right? Mm-hmm. So when we, understand right. Those, when we understand those seven liberal arts and sciences, since some people believe Masons run the world and shit, right? And we want to look at that diagram. And they tell you you got to study grammar, rhetoric, uh, logic, arithmetic, geometry, the fifth and noble science. Music is sixth. Seventh is astronomy. Astronomy is the highest science you can get. The, the problem with liberation today is they don't have a concept of time. Why? Because you're not an astronomer. But, and I'm not knocking you. I'm that, it's just not your job, but it's my job. And, and if you want to look at the opposition or you want to look at, since we gave them the mystery school, for some reason, we said astronomy is the highest science. It is your North Star navigation, you mariner, right? It's the how, it's the how you're going to coordinate yourself on space and time. So, therefore, somebody with that type of knowledge, which we can equate, let's just look at the other side of it. Let's just play chess. On the other side of the, uh, uh, of the chess board, you're going to see the United States Naval Observatory. Mm-hmm. And you're going to see that they study the Earth's spin orientation and distance from different planets and things like that. And you're also going to see that the vice president of the United States lives there, which is the second man in charge. He lives at the observatory. And you're also going to see that the Navy of the, the United States Naval Observatory feeds data to who? The United States Department of Defense. That's the fact. Mm-hmm. Stop. Why is the War Department dependent upon astronomy for warfare? Okay, cool. Now let's go look at World War One. When uh, uh, I think I was one when we when, when the United States goes storm the shores of Normandy, D Day. Exactly. That is called Operation Neptune. Go look Overlord. that shit up. That's called yes, Operation sir. Neptune. So now we got warfare and planets. Cool. We got we got we got zodiac stuff all in Washington D.C. Now yes, if we want to get into spirituality. We can say that the the Catholic Church to this day they own an observatory out in Arizona. Look that up. The Vatican studies the stars as well. All right? So now warfare and astronomy are in now fact, synonymous. They're synonymous. They're the same That's thing. That's fact called Lucifer. Right. So, mm-hmm. so, so now when we look at time, right, daylight savings time, like I tell people, this was daylight savings time come from European psychology at warfare when they passed the Wartime Act. Right. And they say, wait a minute, we at war, and we need to conserve the energy of the nation, so therefore y'all going to shut the grid down an hour early because we at war overseas. And they did this twice. And the last time, or the third time, was George Bush, uh, who changed time, daylight savings time, and pushed it up like a week or two early in March. He did that from a place called Sandia uh, laboratories out west on the west coast, which is owned by Lockheed Martin. Lockheed Martin makes bombs. So he changed time from a location that makes bombs. So time is a concept 
of warfare. I just proved it. All right? So no matter how you want to slice it, that is the matter. So when people be talking about it ain't time for that, energetically, which is psychically, what you're saying is the reason why you're saying that it's not time for that because somebody on that frequency called time and their concept is warfare and your ass is scared to go to war. That's just right what it is. You right just scared to go to war with it. So the way that you win the war, obviously they're telling you that you must know astronomy because that's what we do if we want to look at the opposition, third party. <laughs> that's what we do when we go to war. We call it Operation Neptune. We call it our, 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 our Navy Observatory who study these stars, got to feed this data to the Department of Defense. I always say, but damn, if it was always just about taking a map and going to shoot somebody, why ain't it that simple? It, ha- it has to be something else to it, and I just proved that. That's astronomy. So with that, I just laid the foundation for why time and, and, and stars are important for warfare because some of your opponent uses that. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So I'm going to come off the gas, and I'm going to let the prime minister do what he do because one thing that we do very well over here, very well over here that we do, you know, and the minister told me, I, I'm going to tell you, what qualifies me to speak on this is because it's real simple. You can, A, you can go to myastrologycoach.com, you can click on the blog, and I have a blog called uh, um, the portal, the portal, it's called portal to the Cosmos, where I write the future three months in advance. And I give you what's called red days, and on these red days, something's going to happen that's usually malefic in nature because the malefic things in this society makes world news. So if it's an act of nature, like a, a, true, a, a big ass tsunami, an earthquake, a mass food shooting, the Boston Marathon bombing, the uh, murder of Gaddafi, or if it was the, uh, the death of Chavez, Hugo Chavez died, if it was just this plane crash in San Francisco a couple days ago, uh, it don't matter. Anything, anything that is majorly malistic that gets the world news, it happens on the day that I already wrote about. Mm-hmm. And that's okay. there. I write that in the future, three months ahead of time. I did the whole year, but the minister said, no, nah, don't give it to him like that. Give him to him in three-month increments. So I scaled back and gave it to him. That's what qualifies me to speak about that particular thing. And my thing is we study the law of correspondence very, very carefully. And those are in what we call your seven hermetic or the seven laws of Tahuti. You got to study that. That's the second. That's the second law, and what they said, which is probably one of the greatest laws, because the law of correspondence allows you to check the reality of that which you live in. That is your as above, so below. How do you know it's below if you don't have a certain correspondence on this particular plane? That the law of correspondence proves that you are God down here. So what the minister is about to actually talk to y'all tonight about is. A lot of laws of correspondence based off an active thought principle that we put out there, and then it came back down in this reality. And I'm going to close with this. Stop lying and pump faking that you believe in your ancestors, that you believe the gods is real, if we ain't going to get out here and make one collective cry for the same thing to see if they're real. Because if they're real, then they're real. If they're not, then we need to stop believing in that. And I know that, well, I know that we believe in that. You know what I'm saying? So we just got to pick up the phone, like Bobby say, and call the motherfucking spirit world, but we all collectively need to do that with a certain intent, and then this shit is going to start to change, and just listen to the stories that the prime minister about to share to you. So go ahead, Minister Drew. All right, man. That's a hell of a way to warm the show up, yo. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, man, Eileen and Brother L, man, I appreciate y'all uh, for having me on the platform tonight, man, first time ever. Uh, on this show, obviously, uh, with, with my comrade, No Boy and Pooh. But uh, a lot of people may be thinking that the dialogue is going in the direction of picking up your gun and your bat and whatever else you have at your disposal to engage inside of warfare, but that's not where we're going. The The science is you have an enemy that has mastered the first house element. He, which is Ares, he's mastered warfare. Uh, he has bombs, tanks, grenades, swords. He makes the guns, uh, the gunpowder, the bullets, you name it. So anybody that with a rational mind will understand that that's not the way that you're going to win. It's 
not going to happen that way. All right? No, sir. You, you beat him or you beat the, the, the opposition through way of the spirit world. Your 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 old your old ancient practices of spirituality, getting into your your ritual mindset to understand how to manipulate the finer principles in this matrix in order to make things manifest here on this planet. Okay? And the example that I like to give is twelfth house rounds things out. That's the last stop on the wheel. That's when you make total unification with the most high and the ego is, is shattered, and you become uh, uh, in a blissful state with, with the creator, as they say, right? So if you're going to be a first house opposition, you have to use 12 house means. So it's it's uh, similar to the second house. You're dealing with finances. You're dealing with possessions. Somebody that has an army, i.e. first house, or is aggressive, will come and take your shit. What do it mean that you got money? So what? You stun, I come rob your ass. What you going to do about it? Same thing with the third house. You're talking a lot of good game, right? But the second house cat got that money, and he said, man, this, this, this nigga right here, he ain't number talk, man. What it mean? You, 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 what you got? You know what I mean? Fourth house, the, the family thing, family got broken down through what? Third house issues, communication problems, slander amongst your own family. So, so forth and so on to paint a picture of where I'm trying to go with this whole thing. So we've had, over the last year, some of the most phenomenal uh, uh, situations and cases to display to people on how this science actually works, and we've got over sixty people to vouch. Because we get, we got a, a, a revolving door of people that come in and out of these trips that we go on, and little personal things that we do with people as well to be able to stand up and testify to what we're saying today. This, this is not going undocumented. We have live witnesses there, and plenty, plenty pictures to to show and prove. What, what the business is, but to get into it, um, I give people an example of what I'm talking about. Back in March, March 22nd, we, we take people on equinoxes and solstice trips every year, you know what I mean, spring, summer, fall. We take the wind off usually, okay? We took people down to Stone Mountain. Now, like the brother said, some people may say it's witchcraft, but we understand the higher dynamics of how to manipulate this reality with 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 these the, the energies of the cosmos, okay? We go down there, and I told Noble about a week before we hit the spot. I said, "Look, man, I go look to see what the configuration is and the geometry in the sky. The geometry in the sky that day was a pentagram for that weekend while we were down there. So I said, Noble, man, there's some banishing that has to be done while we're down here. So we get to the spot, do the research on the Stone Mountain. Stone Mountain, obviously, is where the Ku Klux Klan." Uh, put themselves into motion on top of that mountain. They actually had the governor of the state participate in the ceremony of the burning of the wooden cross on top of the mountain. So I say, Noble, we're going to go up here and we're going to reverse this shit. We're going we're gonna to banish that thought form because that's, what's, that's what it's about. Projecting your righteous intent into the ethers in order to make things manifest back here on planet Earth. So we get up there. You know, it's about 30 of us up there on the mountain, and I go in on the rituals, man. I had everybody order a lion mask because one of the particular energies that was in the sky that day was uh, conjunct regulus, okay, in, in the side of Leo. So I had everybody go out and buy lion masks for the trip when we got up on top of the mountain to do the ritual. So when we get up there, some people might have saw pictures on Facebook. I know Coach Kaya had, had, uh, had them on his page for quite a while. You'll see... That when we got up there, first of all, you couldn't see literally four feet in front of you. That's how thick the fog was uh, on top of the mountain. We get up there, we banish the four corners with the banisher, right? Immediately, every cloud on top of that mountain dissipated. Every single cloud. Now, if you look on the mountain, you will see that you have uh, these these generals Lee and, and, and the other uh, uh, um, soldiers and whatnot that participated in, 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 in warfare, you know what I mean, and, and racism and slavery and things of that nature. Well, we went up there with the intent to reverse that energy. About four weeks later, right, four weeks later, a story breaks out in the news, and we got the links. We'll send them to y'all if y'all want to read them. A story breaks out. 
a, a white man down in the state of Georgia now comes and petitions the state government because he says he wants the images taken down off of the mountain because they depict slavery and racism. Hmm. That's right. Fact. Fact. I, just, I, I go, just dropped it in the chat room. Now, 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 we go up there with the intent to banish and reverse the energy that was put up there hundreds of years ago, right, from this particular uh, 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 energy, the KKK, Mm-hmm. that put these images of these men on top of this mountain. And now you have people in the state of Georgia that look nothing like you and me making petitions to their local government that they want that shit taken off the mountain. Wow. This is how the shot works, right? So then, fast forward into this, this pre- previous joint we just had for the summer solstice, right? I decided... That I, I really scaled back, man, on the ritual. But what, but what I did decide to do, I bought old glory, aka the, the fifty stars and the stripes. Right? Y'all know what I'm talking about. Exactly. We go up on top of the mountain, right? Because what we did was we climbed. What was it? No, about six, seven thousand feet up in elevation at, at Grandfather Mountain. Very close to six thousand. I think we was about six thousand feet up. We climbed the mountain, right? Because we understand how to correspond with the energy in the cosmos. That weekend, for those of you that were paying attention to the news, you would notice that they, they were talking about this, this super moon that was in Capricorn, right? But Capricorn is the is the goat that climbs the mountain, right? Mm-hmm. So we went down there to climb the mountain, 6,000 feet up in elevation. It was about 18 of us that took the hike up. So... When we came down, when we came down, we found a spot to do our ceremony in, right? So I took the flag and I scribed 50 names of black men who had been gunned down in the streets by police officers, right? Because it's time for divine retribution down here, and I'm sorry to the peace, love, and light people. I, I get it. I understand. But we don't want to talk about the other side of the coin that's necessary. Mm-hmm. We always like to keep it pretty and white. And we don't want we don't want to touch that because we, you know, the the stigma that's on it and oh, let's just all be happy. But meanwhile, our lives are miserable down this motherfucker. Exactly. Right? So 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 anyway, so I scribed these names onto the flag, right, along with some other things on the flag. So we do a chant dealing with the sacred name of the moon in the Hebrew on top of the mountain, right? And the last name that I called out was Trayvon Martin, right? So that was a Sunday. Monday came, and unbeknownst to me, I didn't know that the Trayvon Martin case started that Monday. Right? But what was interesting about the whole phenomenon was three days after we got off the top of that mountain doing that particular ritual, for L.A., right, the city of angels, we're, part, we're petitioning the angelic host. Four L.A. police department officers were shot in L.A. three days after we do that ritual to ask for divine retribution for police shooting black man down in the street. Right. Right? That's right. So so the story gets even more interesting. We leave about, I don't know what it was, about four days after that. Now, everybody everybody knows the symbolism between the flag and this particular country is the eagle. That's, that's that's, That's their... that's their totem, the eagle. Is their totem. So the flag and the eagle is synonymous, right? So we're putting on a presentation for the people that actually participated. We had a free presentation for those that came to show them how the law of correspondence is working and that you are actually participating in manipulating this physical reality and what I like to call spiritual talismatics. Fuck the MK Ultra shit. I, I get all that. You know, motherfuckers in the laboratory with shit up to their head and motherfuckers going out 
you know, facilitating orders. No, 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 no. Look, man, we got spiritual talismatics over here where you can manipulate the ether and have a walk-in facilitate your intent. <laughs> wow. Say that and shit again. <laughs> facilitate your intent. It's like you got a, a navigation in your will. Right, that's picking up a signal from somewhere else telling you which way to go. Once you understand the invisible worlds, man, this is the power of the human mind. They said in the end, the battle will be in the mind. Exactly. Right? True so, Armageddon. So, so, exactly. True Armageddon. So, so anyway, moving on, four days after we leave Stone Mountain, we get an email from one of the young ladies that participated literally two minutes before we were going on with the presentation to the group that went. Story breaks in Stone Mountain that on March 22nd, check this, y'all, they had two bald eagles come in to Stone Mountain that they were keeping, uh, you know, under their care at the mountain. Now, remember, we just come off the spring equinox on that same date. This is how the creator is telling us that you all are walking directly on the right path with what y'all doing because it keep lining up. But what happened was one of the bald eagles died, hmm. right? Five days after we come off the mountain doing a ritual with Old Glory and the emblem, which is the eagle, on the very same uh, 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 grid where we do it, Grandfather Mountain, a bald eagle dies by the name of Isis. Hmm. That's right. We got the queen. We got the queen, but I, but I did the, the presentation on Charles Ramsey, which one number Ramses called Ramses Springs the Queens, and I tried to show the people then that that was an angelic story if you looked at the names, Ariel. But what happened? We had just came off the mountain with the goddamn lion mask, but when you go look up Ariel, which is Castro, who, who who was holding the young ladies, you go look up Ariel, and, it tra- and the name translates to the, the lion mask of God. Right? And you look at all the other names involved in the story, right? It was, it was, it was, it was the dude that helped him kick in the goddamn door name was Angel. Right. The next, the next door neighbor name was Israel. Right. One of, one of the, one of the, one of the young ladies' name, her name was Amen. This, shit, this, shit, this. We have to understand that the, the. See, we can't get caught up in, in the quote unquote tragedy. The, these people, listen. These stories are happening so that we can understand where we are in time and space and what we need to do. Because because symbols, symbols help you get in and out of places all the time. All the time. This is the this is the divine way that the creator speaks through symbolism. If you don't get an archangel to show up directly in the in the in the physical, then how else you gonna get it? You have to get it through understanding the symbols. Right? So anyway, ISIS falls over dead. Now, now, this is what's interesting. When we did the ritual on top of the mountain, right, we did it when Scorpio was rising on the ascendant. And Saturn, as, it, as, the, as the astrologers would know, is in Scorpio right now. It was maybe, what was it, though? But it was conjunct and uh, ascended by, by about two degrees? Yeah, barely. So, but, right, but, right, exactly. So so anybody that knows what the planets rule different metals, okay, and Saturn governs lead. So mm-hmm. at the time of the ritual, right, when we go back to track the time that we did the ritual, Scorpio was rising, Saturn was conjunct the ascendant, right? Now they say Isis, right, which is the which is the which is, which is the goddess patron of magic, right? She dies, but check what they said she died from. She said she died from lead poisoning. Mm. This is how you merge galactic celestial consciousness with, with your with your with your with your with your mind to make things happen down here. Now, it, 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 I'm, I'm gonna tell y'all how I know we 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 in the end, man. Where this shit got to go down. And we have to come together. It ain't got. It ain't got to be everybody. I ain't, I ain't saying that they got to be everybody. I'm talking about the people that's in positions of power, right? And let's get, we got to get past the rhetoric and the hyperbole, man. We have to really figure out who is who 
and how to facilitate what? Because everybody ain't a priest and everybody ain't a pharaoh, damn it. That's just the reality. You got some people want to be every goddamn thing, uh. right? So, 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 if you if you go read Daniel twelve and one, right? It talks about how in the end time when the nations are in turmoil, right? Just look at what's going on in Syria and Egypt. Uh, 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 you know, you got the United States all over the goddamn place, right? It says that the archangel Michael will be there for your people in that particular time. Now, I'm going to show y'all how this entity has been permeating, waiting for us to get it in down here and use the, 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 the angelic host to get it in by way of some of the examples that I just showed y'all. Now, we got Trayvon Martin, right? This, look, you gotta, look at the names, Mar, Mar, and Mars, right? Uh -huh. he, 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 he attended a school called Michael Crop High School. Michael Crop High School, right? They have uh -huh. a program known as Students Training in Arts Repertory better known as the STAR program, right? Mm -hmm. I'm just going to walk down the line, all these Michaels, right? You had, y'all remember when the lights went off at the Super Bowl, right? I'm talking about all these major events. I'm going to show you who's the spokesperson for this shit. The Super Bowl, the motherfucking lights went out, right? Mm -hmm. On the ESPN blogs, the FBI special agent that they had to come on to talk about the situation, his name was Michael Anderson. The New Orleans Fire Department chief that they had to come on to talk about the situation, his name was Michael Williams. You had the, the Charles Ramsey situation with the three young ladies held hostage. You had the female version of Michael that was in the house by the name of Michelle. Right? You got, uh, her name was Michelle Knight. And what do Knights do? You, you ride on the night when it's time to go to battle. Right? right. The Cleveland police chief who, re, who was in charge of the whole uh, situation with the Ramsey uh, 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 rescue, his name was Michael McGrath. The OKC mayor, his name, for where, the, where the tornado just went through Oklahoma and more, his name was Michael Connett. The president of the basement contracts for for more Oklahoma that was talking about, because everybody said, well, why they ain't got no basements out there? Well, they had somebody come on and talk about it who was the president of those particular contracts in that particular town. His name is Michael Hancock. The custom home builder who actually builds the basements in more Oklahoma, his name is Michael Barrett. The prank call that you had, uh, when, the, when the nurse ended up uh, allegedly killing herself because somebody got through and got a hold of the princess and uh, the prince over there, uh, the, 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 uh, the royal family, the whole shit jumped off with the DJ who made the prank call. With well, the DJ who made the prank call, his name was, um, what was this dude's name? Michael Christian, right? And, and the London, the London killings... Where the, where the gentleman pulled out his machete to go in on that on that officer out in the street where he said it's an I for I two for two with all the blood and shit on his hands holding the machete. His name was Michael. So what I'm trying to express here is that the energy of Michael War and 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 and, and what 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 is perceived as violence or chaos is amongst us. This is not no coincidence. Every single time something major happens in the news cycle, by the way, today the defense rest is case in the Trayvon Martin case, right? CNN uh, uh, wrote about it today, obviously, like they always do. The gentleman who wrote the story, his name is Michael Pearson. You had the train over in, uh, what was that note, the train that crashed, the 
About 20, 30 bet. people dead? In Quebec, right. In Quebec, where was that? In Quebec? Yeah, Quebec, Canada. A couple of days His ago. His name is Michael. <laughs> so, so every single major news story that hits the fan where the populace are, are, are being trained to listen. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. See, but this is what I mean by divine shit right now. Eileen, look in your chat room and who was the last person that typed something? My man, Michael Pratt. Michael Pratt. Now, is that a coincidence? No, <laughs> it's not no damn coincidence. That's the realm that we're talking about that runs this shit down here. But go ahead, Minister. Right. Well, so, we, so we what I'm saying want, we to want to uh, hit up the people on the science of what Michael means. In the Hebrew, it means he who dares to be like God. Oh, right. Uh-huh. That's right. Yes, sir. And that's right. That's right. And, and, and he is the one that leads the divine army in the, in, the, in the heavens. Right? And he is the one that protects the children. Right? In the heavens. So, so uh, you know, side note. You know, everybody tripping on this Michael Jackson shit. That was some bullshit because that's what Mike represented. But anyway, and for the most part, what I'm, what, I'm, what I'm displaying to the people tonight is the energy of Michael is present down here. And I got so many personal testimonies on it. But I don't want to get into that. I want it to be broad enough where people can see. Because Minister Jew don't control that shit per se. See? I don't write the stories for CNN. I'm not the motherfucker with the machete in his hand, kill him up. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not the motherfucking FBI chief and the, and the police. I'm not that. So, so can't nobody write this shit off as, oh man, that's just a personal experience that this brother had. No, 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 no. no. This is, this is world news, and every single time. This name keep popping up as the spokesperson, but it says in Daniel 12 and 1 that when there's turmoil and chaos amongst the nations down here, this will be the energy that show up to ride for the people, right? So so it's warfare time, people. It's, it's, as much as they might not want to hear it, that is what time it is, and you have to go in on the, on the, on the invisible world to understand how to facilitate it with less casualties, uh, mm-hmm. with less casualties. This is this is this is the science. And like Noble said, either we're going to get into that, or we're just going to complain about. Oh, look what they did! They made a, the, the Supreme Court passed a ruling saying um, black folks not going to be able to vote. Uh, well, they know the states going to be. Listen, man, I'm glad they did that shit, and I'm going to tell you why. Because it makes people draw a line in the sand, damn it. We, mm-hmm. we cannot continue to be having gripes and grudges when we know we live in a paradigm that sometimes you may get lucky, but most time your ass is not, right? So if we know that, when are we going to stop whining and complaining? And I'm glad that they draw a, draw a line in the sand because now you are forced to look at it for what it is, and the mere fact that somebody has the power to dictate that means your ass is in trouble already. Period. Mm-hmm. Right. That's right. Right. That's right. You know, I want to add on to the to the to the. It's a lot of stuff you said. Um, I said I want people to get the symbols uh, of the celestial aspect of even going. Going to a mountain where a mountain, like I said, has always been synonymous for your spiritual ascension. It's where the prophets go to get their revelation from God and all of our spiritual texts for the most part. And you go up there and it's a Capricorn for a moon. But Capricorn also symbolizes government and astrology. So when planet Saturn that rules Capricorn is up on the horizon and you're doing something uh, with the flag um, and, and to turn around, I mean instantly, Instantly. I mean, I really want y'all to grasp that instantly that Monday, as we're talking about divine retribution, that Monday in the city of the angels, Los Angeles, police are being fired on unexpectedly. Uh, and, and the next thing you know, the eagle, which was a movie, the eagle, the eagle Isis dies. In the movie, there's a movie that came out in 2011 called The Eagle, uh, where a Roman centurion had to go fight against the Brits, who were really, who were really the Druids which were really depicted as black folks because they had paint this, this ash on them and they had mohawks with necklaces all around them. 
on their necks and shit. But they had captured his father's eagle hundreds and hundreds of years prior, the Ninth Infantry. And um, the, the soldier's name was Marcus Flavius Aquila. Well, see, mm-hmm. Aquila is a constellation in the Northern Hemisphere, which is known as the Eagle. And that's why yep. the movie was called The Eagle. So somebody, Eagle. which is the spirit of film. And see, that's another thing. People got to realize that the spirit of film are sometimes people, those thought forms that are inside of those writers, those thoughts are actually coming from the angelic slash ancestral realm for them to carry out our intent to get us to wake up through symbols. How are you going to make a movie about the damn eagle? I've seen it, and I'm going to show you. How, you got to see, it becomes personal because when you know about that constellation, the brightest star in it is called Altar. But when you get into the when you get into the mansions of the moon, I got an Aquarius moon, but in Ceridio astrology being Capricorn, my moon lines up directly with Altar. So I'm going to be able to see that. I'm going to gravitate towards that movie because when the where the moon was at, when I was born, was in the same constellation of the eagle. So anything I do dealing with the eagle, and we know that they say the moon rules the astral plane, anything that I do of a magical correspondence with the eagle, I am going to gravitate towards that shit. So next thing you know, the movie go. I mean, you know, the movie come out, the eagle goes in, in, in this physical form, and we all know that Isis has a relationship with that character named Anubis, who is Ampu. That is a fact. That is in exactly. the theology of God yeah. of Kemi. So that is a prophecy that has been played out that Ampu leads the people up to the mountaintop, and then Isis comes down. In the form of that. So it's ball game down here. Literally. It's, it's ball game down here. So when the minister talk about walking, go look at the movie and it's free. And I'm going to see if I can find a link called The uh, the Adjustment Bureau. Is it The Adjustment Bureau? See, 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 see when are we going to start doing The Matrix? When are we going to start doing, um, what's that other one, Inception, where we all concentrate our thoughts Hook your ass up to the chair. We all concentrate our collective thought on one particular center point reference and watch it come back down into this reality. So that is the history that we have when we say, listen, this is how you do it. Now, what I want to say about warfare, because I'm not adverse nor motherfucking afraid if it's going to be a physical combat war, because in my psychotic ass mind, it's real simple. If you're going to bomb your infrastructure, you're only helping me. Civil war, you don't want that. That costs too much, and you're just killing your own death. And we got home court advantage. So exactly. I always say this. See, in the context, you got to think like that because, see, that whole King Alfred plan and concentration camps, I ain't saying that shit don't exist, man, but I'm going to tell you this. That shit is a defense mechanism because ain't no way in hell they're going to let, uh, they're going to go to war with you for all this damn time, and then all of a sudden you, you ain't a slave no more. You're getting all this money. You got more power. You got a black president. You're not going to tell me all that shit is Illuminati mind control to keep you in check. No. That is your greatness. Your greatness will always outshine. Forget who that was. Uh, I think it was the rabbi when he talked about, when you look at the computer, it starts off with HOTEP, H-T-T-P. You know, the technology, you ain't going to never get past African spirituality. When you got Gmail, look at, when, you, when you open your Gmail, look at the code at the top and watch that shit say backslash S-H-V-A, Shiva. You understand what I'm saying? So when you start understanding how this dynamic works down here, is you can, we can collectively center our thoughts and allow that angelic force to come through. But what's going to happen, somebody's going to take on the physical form and start acting out that what you think. You're shooting a movie down here, and that's the name of the game. That's, that's Hollywood, right? But you are the spiritual Hollywood. We have to just, it's real simple, write a cosmic script and then watch it come back down and voila, magic. That's how that shit happens. Now, again, back to the physical aspect, man, listen, if you want to bomb this damn thing and go to war, bring it down then, damn it. Burn it the hell down. That's what it's about. Like, like at what point, at, see, again, that's where it goes back to, that shit goes back to, and I ain't going to dwell on it, but it goes back to the fear aspect. And what I would like to see, and I said in the cosmic art of war, I would like to see a triangle offense ran. Because I strongly believe that Obama and Eric Holder are angelically placed 
inside of this position. I don't believe they're Illuminati. And the reason I say that is it just makes absolutely no sense. We got we got army. We got we can put you in concentration camps. We can put you in jail. We can do all this stuff to you. I don't have to trick you in 2012 to give you a black president to correspond with your Mayan prophecy. It don't make no sense. And if they are doing that, that shows you a weak psychology because they have to use you to beat you. They have to excite you to make you fight. And that shows you that you a coward in itself. So either way it go, well, you know, it, it ain't, it ain't going to add up right where well, you need to be doing something. So we got a small window of time because I always said it. I said Eric Holder, which is the United States Attorney General of the United States, and y'all can go look this up and I'll go find it and drop it in, in, in the chat. This dude holds the key, and when you study law, you know it's something called a holder in due course. And he's the top prosecution in the United States. He's an Aquarius. He's a rebel. Look into his history. All right? He was uh, he'd been putting people that that's in D.C. up on charges before before he even became the headshot attorney general. But my point is, he did one thing that was instrumental that went right along with the spirit was telling me. When the new Black Panther Party of Philadelphia King Samir and Brother Jerry was at the voting polls at the first election for Obama. You had white people down there talking about they was voter intimidation. They were scared. And CNN got an Eric Holder's ass because the DOJ, the Department of Justice, dismissed the damn case against the new Black Panther Party, and the new Black Panther Party didn't even come to court. And, and, and they were, mm-hmm. white America was pissed off with that. Look into that. Look into that. And then this other thing is, you can see an interview with Eric Holder when they asking him questions, and he started getting into the history of racism, and he said, my people. And then people, you know, making comments, well, it's the American people. What do you mean, my people? And so he's making a clean reference of being, being racially conscientious of this That's political true. paradigm when he talks about my people. All right? That's another right. hit. So what right. I'm saying, the trying, go ahead, go ahead. As a matter of fact, he dropped those charges on the on the new Black Panther Party members. Right, he dropped them. So, right. dropped he them. Dropped, dropped right. them. See, it's a mm-hmm. cold. It's a cold. It's a cold. See how Rahm Emanuel, and I don't even tell you who that spirit is. I'm gonna say that. Look, Rahm Emanuel come in. He rolls out, go to Chicago, become the mayor. The next thing you know, there's a proclamation that deals with the Moors becoming family of nations for the whole city of Chicago. That shit is a spirit move. But, but see, you don't know how to navigate this stuff because you're looking at the political aspect. When you don't have a political agenda on the table and you got bankers who constantly got something on the table, what do you think you got to deal with oh, as Obama? Like, so you don't know the pressure uh, you can't even make love to your wife without somebody standing on the outside of the door with a pistol in their pocket who may get the order to murk your ass or your wife or your family. You don't understand what that kind of thinking entails. That's a hell of a lifestyle. How are you going to navigate and get the people to the promised land without getting murked? You ain't even showing up now putting nothing on the table. So what we got we to gotta really grow up in this thing and really quickly, so it's time for me to start pressing these niggas' buttons out here. So I gotta press these goddamn buttons because you can't tell Tom better than me, and that's what makes me the supreme motherfucking ruler of this shit. And I hate to be arrogant, but I call the fucking future before it fucking happens. So I'm God down here. Prove that shit. That's how I want to get. Fuck everything you talking. I will show you what's gonna happen tomorrow because damn it, I can show you how we make it happen tomorrow. And ain't nothing topping that down here. Let's just get let's get let's get this shit on. We need to run the motherfucking triangle offense, real simple. All you black power motherfuckers, you need to motherfucking become the executive branch of shit. All the Moors who are knowledgeable and law, they are the legislative branch of this motherfucking government, of this new war motherfucking order of us. The spiritual motherfuckers, we are the judicial aspect of this shit. When the Moors has something going on in court and we don't win the intellectual war and we know that it was shady and it was some bullshit, all you black power against the motherfuckers are to go and enforce the motherfucking law. And the spiritual motherfuckers, you link up with us when we go to the mountaintops and we petition the heavens and we get the motherfucking spiritual cloak shit going before they go down in the physical world to handle out this motherfucking shit. Now, we're fucking with that triangle offense. Niggas are scared. That's how you do this shit. It ain't going to be no everybody going to be a more. Everybody going to be. It ain't how it runs. The, the creation is based off the zodiac, which means everything goes because it's all one will, all one reality. Everything goes in the zodiac. You need a ministry of defense. 
You need a ministry of economics. You need a ministry of communication. You need the damn home aspect. You need a ministry of art for the children. You need help. You need relationships. You need investments. You need higher education. You need government. You need friends and technology. You need spirituality. I just walked around the whole goddamn 12 aspects of fucking reality. You need all that shit. You need it all. So, therefore, so I ain't complaining about it. I'm just going to do it. So we got the American, we got the, we got the mound builders of America that's coming. Pyramids is already built. Only thing we got to do is do certain things, but we need to get this ministry shit popping. But these cats that's working with nationality, these cats, that's to- man, stop touring and being all deep in the bookstore with your security, scared of your own goddamn people, but you ain't taking your security to go battle and put some goddamn legislation on the goddamn books to battle these motherfuckers out here, man. That shit don't oppress me. What are you scared of the people for? Walking around with all this goddamn security for? For what? Who you bad on? You ain't fighting nobody. Mm-hmm. Fuck out of here with that, man. You know, I'm not. I'm not buying that. You're yeah, there's no doubt about that, it. That, 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 you're no scared. Doubt no doubt about it. When we're talking about that, you know, and we also got to talk about the influences and which that the rays from these particular constellations and these particular stars and suns moons have upon the physical body. You know, we know in astrology that um, they produce particular effects within the body, and us being melanated people, we have the ability you know, to absorb what is known as cosmic energy, or photonic okay. light, or what is also known as um, chi or ki or prana energy. You know what I'm saying? That's the second um, um, position to what you were talking about. Knowing is, knowing is good, but application, as you were saying, is at the what wins the war, you know what I'm saying? No one is only half the battle. So that's the key, is that once we know astrology and know the um, cycle of these particular constellations, you have to learn when the best time to harness energy, you know what I'm saying? How to use it, where to store it at within your physical body. And that's how you um, learn how to open up your psychic centers in order to even operate on the astral plane and utilize your magic. Absolutely. 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 And, and, and see, that, that, that gets into what we call ritual. I know people are scared of that word. I call it activation. It's becoming active, man. You just, It ain't about just, oh, it's Ramadan and Sirius rises at the Midhaven at midnight. Okay, and what? What do you think we're building pyramids for? That like that, there, there was a harnessing of energy of power to activate yourself, the people, in the earth, you know what I mean, and it, and it, and it's and it's very simple. It is very simple. The only thing we got to do, and we've done it all the time. So when we get call outs and say, "Yo, we gonna have a," uh, and I got it on a DVD called Galactic Activation. They beg me, I got some people to take it off the market because it's really like literally. We do, we did uh, meditation to focus on the rainbow, and then thirteen. And I called that radio show. I called it nine thirteen. I'm very versed in numbers. And then next thing you know, 13 days later, there's a rainbow in, in, in Harlem over the National Black Theater, which, which has a black pyramid on top of the building. Stop playing. The rainbow is your covenant. That goes your promise from the ancestors were speaking. We do a meditation because Sirius was rising, and I tell the people to uh, just imagine a dog barking. Just a dog, a dog barking. But next thing you know, you see something, the Greyhound bus flipped over, and it was coming from Philadelphia on its way to, uh, it was going to the Midwest. And, and it's like, oh, wow, well, the bus flipped off. How, the same time that you're doing the serious meditation on the dog star, a bus flip over. Now, wasn't nobody killed, but see, again, it goes to your perception of what you can perceive to be good or bad. And I ain't even got to get into that aspect. But the point is, the only thing you got to do, see, you, when are we going to be able to think it and it be it? I don't think we live in a space anymore. I know I don't live in a space where I have to fast for 60 days, and there's nothing wrong with that. I ain't knocking that. And I have to go doo-doo in the backyard and throw it on my porch. Like, like, yo, that where you at in space and time is really about, about, is about your thought being the ultimate manifestation. But whatever you choose to do, do that because, and that's one thing, that's the only thing I ever liked about Crowley when he just said it, like, man, do what thy will and let love be the law of the land. Simply meaning when you put your heart, your emotion in that damn tent, that is going to be the manifestation for you. 
Because I see all the time as an astrologer that the good, the bad, the ugly, no matter what happens, I can always see it in the cosmic aspect of your physical reality. Whether you knew you was about to hit this jackpot real fast or you didn't know, you're always living within your divine plan is my point. You're always living in your divine plan. It is based off what? Your decision. So the bottom line is, because this ain't really about theory, and we can be done with the show because it's really simple. We just got to get to the point where we say, you know what? I'm down with motherfucking the priesthood and activating this shit. And then we can just send the correspondence out and we get on this motherfucking star sign and show you how we've been doing that shit. Because with the prime minister laid down, telling you like this walk-ins that's coming down here, again, I strongly adjust everybody go watch that movie called The Adjustment Bureau, and it's on the Internet for free. And uh, I'm a hush and, 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 man, what I want to say, too, is just to give another example. It was November 3rd, 2000, what, that was 11. And it was the day before they went into deliberation on the Michael Jackson case. And I told no, I said, let's go, let's go upstairs, let's take it to the fifth dimension, right? And no, I want you to build on the Pentagon and how we need to get out of fourth dimension and get in the fifth dimension in order to change reality in the third dimension. But on on the third, we sent an email out to the network members, right, over at My Astrology Coach, and... We put together a ceremony uplifting the energy of Mike Jackson right before the deliberation went in. Well, the next day, November 4th, right, the grand jury indicts Jerry Sandusky at Penn State for the, for the what? The child molestation charges. Mm. Now, anybody that knows what they drug Mike through the mud for, they said, oh, he was fondling babies, and oh, he's sleeping with the babies, and they wrote him off as a quack job, weirdo, and that he was screwing kids. But this is the kicker. The man who told on Jerry Sandusky name was Michael McQueary, as in you queer, you faggot. <laughs> so... So, so when we do these activations, see, the people got to understand correspondence. If you don't understand that, you're not going to get it. Like, like you have to look at symbols, names to match up with your intent on, on, in, in, the, in the entity and what they were known for to be able to see it come back in this reality. So the grand jury indicts Jerry Sandusky on child molestation charges, and the man that tricked on him, Name is Michael, who's a McQuarrie, as in queer, faggot, uh, you know, pedophile type of, mm-hmm. type of energy. Right. That's not a coincidence. That's not a coincidence. And the, no. and, the, and the coach's name, who was over Penn State, his name was Joe, as in Mike Jackson's daddy, Joe, right? All this. And then, and then Joe, Paterno. Brother, Joe Paterno, Paterno, as in like Joe the father, Paterno, Joe the father, J- Joe... Joe Paterno is a ten of heart. Michael Jackson is a ten of heart in the Destiny card system. So you're dealing with the same energy principles where the scandal goes down and now the real motherfucking pedophiles is getting showed and being brought to the forefront. This is how you become the magician down here, man, the magi down here, understanding when to go in and using your emotion. Don't let anybody tell you that emotion is not important. I'm going to tell you why. Your emotion, and I told them the other day, I, I do not get my nervous system excited because it's going to be a problem. The, the, the deal is this. Your emotions charge your nefesh, a term that they use in the Kabbalistic terms, your etheric body that dwells right, a, right above this 3D reality down here on this planet Earth. So, like, when people, I'll give people an example of what people could practice doing. You got people was all up in arms about Django. Oh, why are they depicting us like that? And, oh, that's so terrible. Django is terrible. Jane yeah. Fox is a slave. You don't fucking get it, do you? The, no, the, the deal is this. He was a hero, gun-slanging, killing motherfucker. I don't exactly. think people understood that part of the psychology, right? So what? So and I, I put the presentation together called the spirit of film, theatrical.
Uncle Magic explained, where I go past the decode and shit to show the actual practice of how things get put in movies and then they happen in real life. Not the conspiracy shit. Oh, the Illuminati did it. No, 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 no. I showed how the people in the movie theater act as the chemical solution, like in a like in the camera room, that people that take real photography and understand photography, the, the movie theater is a is the dark room and you act as the chemical solution. That's why they call it the silver screen. Because right. on film it is something called silver nitrate. That is on uh, that is on plastic on the film that corresponds to the moon frequency. So when you're sitting in a theater, you're having an interplay between projector, i.e. solar energy, which project, projects energy down, and then the moon refracts the energy, right, which is the screen, mm-hmm. which is giving you the image that you, while you're sitting in the moon theater to create right. an image. Right. So while energy. you're sitting there, while you're sitting there, that you are being constantly dipped in the solution in order to create a phenomenon in the physical world to make manifest through an event, i.e. 9-11, i.e. The, the oil spilling down in the Gulf of Mexico. You, whether, these, whether, these, whether these directors are aware of it or not, I'm, that, that's not my concern. I'm going to show people the, the, the formula of how you do that shit for yourself. So your emotions, if you notice, back to my point, your emotions... Right? At the very height of the movie, while the plot is developing, they unscramble the data for you so you can finally kind of get an idea of what's going on. Why? Because your emotions have to be at the highest pitch possible so that, so that the image that is produced, the image that is produced will not be haphazard. It won't be a haphazard image produced in the real 3D world. So all you folks that watch these movies that make y'all mad about slavery, Roots, and all these other movies, let me tell you what you do. You have your altar prepared before you watch the movie because you know you're going to cry and you know you're going to be upset. You get this shit to your advantage. The moment you come from up out of there and all that emotion is running and that adrenaline is pumping, you need to go to that altar and you need to go in on whatever it is you're trying to manifest because... That energy is you're 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 straddling your nefesh in order to create things down here in the physical world. That's how this shit works, man. We we have to get past like we, we you know the, the coding is cool and I get it, but we have to move past to the application of what we can do to use the science. Because if you know you're going in there and you quote unquote under mind control, and then images are being produced, you say, oh, they put it in the movie, and then look what happened. Let's get past what they're doing, understand the science of how it is happening, and then you use it to, to manifest it in your life. That's the science. That's the science. I even got down to the entity that governs film in the joint. Right. Huh? And, and, it's based off, and it's based off It's based off. the frames in the movie, how fast it moves. The, the, the light in your eye can only retain uh, a light at a certain pace. And I forget what the exact number was, but the entity that showed up when we use ah. these cabalistic terms. No, 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 you get it. Yeah, what you were talking See, about in the movie theaters, yeah, they were getting the solar energy and the lunar energy as well. Exactly, because the solar energy and the lunar energy creates imagery. Yes, it is sir. the mother, it is the father that creates the image in the child. When those two frequencies come together, offspring is produced. So, like they say, man is made in the image. When you get into the Kabbalah, you get on the 25th path, you'll see that it is Semek, but you go look up 25 and it says, and let there be light. Exactly. See? So now, now there is a source that you can see. So when you're in the movie theater, you're, it is a delicate balance between solar energy and lunar energy going on in your subconscious mind. And, 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 and it's, I mean, I got a whole presentation on it, man, that's totally off the chain, 
showing how your eye is similar to the lens of the camera and how the light, how, when you're in the movie theater, what it does and how it goes into the different parts of the brain to manifest the imagery. And then you wonder why well, you say, oh, man, they did they put it, they put it in the movies and it happened in the real life. You're helping facilitate the ritual by going in there with your human energy to make the image show up in this reality. Mm-hmm. Right. Solution. You're the careful solution. And you can tell what is the theme of the year because they keep the same, like that one year, 2011, with all them superhero flicks, they was constantly dipping your ass in that solution. Because every other movie was a superhero movie. Up, oh, come get some of this Green Lantern. Up, oh, come get some of this Wolverine. Up, oh, come get some of this Avengers. It was a it was a consistent dipping of the But see, it's not to say that all of these people are not for you, and that's the trick. Everybody ain't against you down here. Some some of those some of those feel was to help facilitate parts of your subconscious mind so that you can remember that you are the goddamn hero. See? But 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 the science is understanding who's who and like they showed you in the avatar flu like 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 I like to tell people, right? It was a scene in there, man, where they was getting their ass kicked toward the end of the movie. The chief man of the, of, the, of the avatars had went down. The mother was in despair because she just saw her husband get murdered. And the young, and the, and the, and the young lady who trained uh, Jake Sully, right, she, she started to run off because she saw defeat was imminent. Something inside of her, though, said, stop, wait a minute. If this going to go down like this, I'm going down in the flames, too. The exactly. moment... She turned around and decided that it was going to go down like that. Every force in nature came to her beck and call. Every goddamn animal, every tree, every goddamn thing on that planet came out to aid and facilitate the defeat. So what I am saying is once we get the courage, damn it, to understand that we are magical beyond our wildest uh, of the wildest imagination, every element, every 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 everything that you can think of on this planet will merge to your will, and you watch what the fuck happened now. It's gonna be hell, but sometimes it gotta be hell, and you gotta shake the grid up in order to get peace. And I have to listen. My thing is this: you know, humanity, spirituality. All this thing, look, man, we're seeking spiritual things because the human side of our existence is hell. So we want to, we want to, we want to escape that, you know, and we want to just get over here and do this, that, and the third and try to escape living in this 3D reality as if this has no part to play in the major scheme and development of what we are as beings in the first place. I don't agree with that philosophy. We are, we are, because it is heaven on earth for some people. For some people, everybody, every all humanity, for some people, ain't fucked up. So, so I'm from the school of thought that look, let's use some of our ancient African practices, right, and these occult measures to bring forth a dynamic that's never been seen before on this planet, where we can have some type of balance. That's that's the science, right? The first thing we say, oh man, we got it. You know, you know, you got to teach the babies. Look, man, the baby, well, the babies got to know. Look, man, we've been saying this shit for 40, 50, 60 years, man. And it's the same old predicament because we've tried every, we've tried marching. We've tried uh, 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 petitioning or with the picket signs. We've done all kind of shit, but we have not. And, and, and by default, because some people, right, even though they might not have been out there, their thoughts were aligned with what they saw. So by default, they were participating in that particular movement. Even if they were not there with the pickets and the and, and the marching, their thoughts aligned with that movement, which made them attached and a part of that particular movement. So the only movement that we have not tried yet, right, right, is a magical spiritual solution. We we haven't tried that yet. No, what we're here to say is we are trailblazing the way. For this shit, because we got we got so many correspondences and testimonials from people that you wouldn't believe it, man. Right. You wouldn't hey, believe it. I get a trail work. Here, here, here go the trail work, man. I know I mean, you make. I want to get to some questions. Uh, here, here go the trail work. 
Here go a DVD we have called The Lack of Activation, which is on MyAstrologyCoach.com. But I, I, I give you a piece of that because you can go back, as my man say, go back and do the raw search. You can go back and do the raw search. If you check me on Blog Talk Radio backslash Ampoo Astrology, go into my archives, and you will see that Saturday, August the 13th, 2011, I did a show called Special Broadcast, The Return of the Dog uh, Serious Rosin. All right, this is August 13th, 2011. Because I knew there's a special alignment that's coming up. See, this, when I say Sirius is rising, what am I saying? I'm saying that Isis is rising because we know in Kim we got a temple to all set that deals with Sirius rising, right? So we're dealing with this Isis energy in 2011 in August, which, mind you, this is the same year that they came out with the movie The Goddamn Eagle. All this shit about to come home real fast. I'll show you how correspondence works. And in that radio broadcast, you're going to hear me say big shout-out to Michael Vick because I understood that when he was a Falcon in Atlanta, he was Haru. And I understood when they brought him up to Philadelphia, which I'm doing the spiritual work here, mm-hmm. they, brought him, they bring him to Philly, he becomes an eagle. When he gets placed under the United States jurisdiction from a Falcon head, Kemet God, to United States eagle, and you will see if you go to YouTube, you can type in Senator Robert Byrd, um, uh, um, 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 what is it, um, Barbaric. When he's going in on a Senate, a Senate appropriations meeting, they're supposed to be talking about money, and he took the time out to talk about Michael Vick, and he kept calling Michael Vick. It's Barbaric, I tell you, from mountaintop to valley low. Barbaric, I tell you, which really was nothing more than a cold. It was a cold talking about the Barbary Wars, though, mm-hmm. and it took Robert Byrd, to go after Michael Vick because he's a bird. So this was a fight about two damn birds. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And if you do the research, do the research on Robert Bird. He used to be an exalted cyclops of the motherfucking KKK, and he has a quote of saying, I would rather die and let old glory be stumped in the mud a thousand times before I serve next to a nigger in the motherfucking war. All right? And then allegedly he changed his ways. Look this all this up, all right? So then we do that radio show. And I and I talked about bird and I talk about Vic because I knew it was spiritual. It's a bird talking about a bird, but they're trying to hit my man on dog fighting charges. And when Michael Vick took the plea, you would see that he took the plea the same week that the movie Underdog came out because what they was doing was they was trying to send Vic to me, which was Anubis. But that's why he came to Philly. You see what I'm saying? So I already knew it. I got the call from the spirit world. See, when Bobby be saying get on the phone with the spirit world, this this, this, this what the fuck it means. You understand what I'm saying? So he comes. So I said, okay, we're going to do this right here because the serious energy is coming. The dog star, right? So like I said, then do the research. You'll see that Greyhound bus flipped over, and you will see on that show I gave up when we was going to do the meditation, you will see the bus was coming from Philly. So I held the bus flip over coming from Philly, and on the spiritual level, I was in Philly, right here, right? So it corresponded. So then, then I also said in that radio show, because the ministers start talking about nature, and then when we start talking about nature, that's when people, I think, get spooked out, because I don't think we really know that we can motherfucking ride out with nature, because you don't practice it in a sense. But let me tell you something. You better question, you better seriously question when Pope Ratzinger, Benedict had just announced when he stepped down, ask yourself who sent that lightning bolt to the top of motherfucking St. Peter, uh, 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 the building, the Vatican, because lightning hit it. And no matter how you slice it, no matter how you slice it, either God is with you and saying, yeah, it's time for him to go, but that don't make no sense because Catholicism is still up and they just got another damn pope any damn way. Or this, my point is there is clearly a spiritual slash physical correspondence with spiritual powers through men, okay, and women, right? So in this radio show, I said, as part of the meditation, I said, we're going to focus on the dog. And then after the second half of the meditation, you're going to envision Haru flying all around the world, swarming this place to make it look like, and it's in the damn clip, I said, make it look like the movie The Birds by Alfred Hitchcock. Now, I promise you, I promise you, I promise you, you're going to hear that. And 
I promise you when you go look at a story in West Virginia, type this in your Google search, West Virginia gets swarmed with birds. And you will see in Huntington. It looks like, look like a scene out of the movie, the birds. Right. When you go to that news clip, you're going to see people saying these birds, they come out in the evening time, and it's scary. It looks like Alfred Hitchcock and the birds. The lady said it in the story. I got all this documented on the DVD. So not only that, but August the 14th up in Indianapolis, all oh, this is the same weekend, in Indianapolis, which is what? Polis City, Indigo, City of the Indigo people, right? So now this is talking about your pineal gland, this city. It's telling you something, right? That's when Sugarland had that concert and that scaffolding fell down. What happened? Mm -hmm. a, a big ass wind, which we always know the breath, the ruach has always been synonymous with spirit. A wind came through and knocked the scaffold down. People got injured, people died. And look this up. The highest person who was a spotlight operator, the highest person on the physical totem pole in music, right, because this is a concert, his name was Nathan Bird. I bullshit. Right. Now, all this going on at the same time, right? Now, his brother, and I'm looking at it right here, his brother said he was one of those people that had a magical power about him with gaining friends. What the hell are he talking about magic for? So that's telling you from the spirit world that this is some spiritual shit from something else. That's why a wind came through. See, what did Garvey say? Look for me in the whirlwind. That ain't no goddamn mystery or some damn, that, that ain't no cliche term. That's the real science. So with that, because that's a trail of correspondence that you can go and look for yourself. All right? That's right. That's what and, we're talking and, about down and, here. And not to mention, it was it was. See, you gotta understand. Like the, it was the it was transformation on Vic, the Falcon energy, the Heru energy to the jurisdiction of the Eagle, right? But they did it in the city of brotherly love, who they already had a brother by the name of McNabb, but they de they moved one out of one jurisdiction and locked them into another jurisdiction that was more feasible on their behalf, spiritually speaking. And they demoted one down. They took they took McNabb went to the Redskins, which is synonymous with our indigenous culture here. And then they moved they demoted them further down to a goddamn Viking. Right. <laughs> so 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 you're looking you're you're looking at the interplay of two brothers, right, being moved around in a spiritual sense for the worse. Right, so we these people play with this shit, man. We 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 just we we why because we don't even think that it's real, yo. We we think like you know you go know, people, oh man, they tripping, no nah, man. It's not those many coincidences nowhere in the world, nowhere. Let me tell you how ill it was when we were setting up to go back in the spring, right? We had we had we had to uh, hook up with the hotels and get out when we when we were staying out down in the Atlanta area. This was right, right before the Pope had stepped down, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Which, which is, which is coincidentally enough funny because the week before he stepped down, we said we cutting the priesthood show off and we ain't gonna be back for a minute. So the priesthood stepped down over here, and a week later the Pope stepped down over there. But what happened was when we ordered, when we was, when we was ordering the room, the lady said this is rather strange because we had eight rooms down at the spot. She said, mm, this is strange. I see seven rooms. She said, no, man, we locked in eight. She says, no, no, I know. I know your order has eight rooms, but I see that only seven are here in Atlanta. We said, well, ma'am, where's the other room at? She said, you're not going to believe this. Hmm. It's in Rome. She said, your room somehow got booked in Rome. <laughs> Holiday in St. Peter's Square. Thank you. And when, and, when, and when we went to check the correspondence on the address, because she was acting all funny and shit, because I, I, I guess at that point her spirit came in like, hold on, wait a minute, they on some other shit. I, I said, I said, man, can we get the address? She's like, well, I don't feel comfortable giving it. I said, ma'am, it's public information. If you tell me the name of the hotel in the city, I can go find it my damn self. So, like, you know, give, give, let me get the address. So she like, okay, she gave me the address. When we go look it up, it, what did it say, Noble? It said, God will be watching you from the mountaintop. Mm -hmm. When we 
went to go look up the address and run it through the Kabbalistic system, and I'm paraphrasing, it was God will be watching you from the highest of places. That's right. That's exactly what it said. That's right. Mm-hmm. That's exactly what it said. So, so what we're saying to the people tonight, man, is know your magic, man. And if we talk in revolution down here, this is the way to get it. Because because it's no way in the world, man, that you can have. We got a hundred correspondences here where this is documented. We make sure we documented this so that later when people come back and read it, man, and see it, it's it's irrefutable evidence. Man, it's Haiti. Irrefutable evidence. Haiti. That's all you gotta look. Haiti. That's why. That's why Haiti was successful. Haiti. If physical Spiritual warfare, they go hand in hand. Haiti. Haiti. But yeah, Aline, go ahead, brother. If you got anybody you got any, any any calls or any questions. Hey, hey no, but hold on. I think one more man and I'm gonna get out of the way. Mm-hmm. Because this 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 really bring it home. <clears throat> when we were down there in March, when we went to the Etawa Mounds, that was a Saturday, I think it was the twenty third on a Saturday, we went to go visit the Etawa Mounds. Mm-hmm. And uh, when we went on top of the mountain getting ready to go in, it was a white lady that came. She was stopping through. I think her husband was a chief. He was a he had passed away or something, right? No, he was an Indian chief that had passed away. Yeah. And she came she came through on the way on the way up back to the crib. She stopped at the Etowa Mouse and we were all there and she was like, You know, I love y'all group. She said, I wanna she said she, I have a sweat lodge up in Minnesota. Anytime y'all wanna come through you can bring the whole group for free, right? So we say, okay, all right. So fast forward three months later at the solstice this year, right? We're doing the ritual. We're going in on the science. We're dealing with the flag and the eagle. That was on a Sunday. Not only Monday did the Trayvon Martin case start, Monday in a town called Duluth, Minnesota, some indigenous Americans up there, their staff had been desecrated, mm. right? The staff, on the top of the staff, was an image of an eagle. So they put a ceremony together in order to rejuvenate the energy of the staff to bring it back into life, spiritually speaking, and then they put the thing back together, and they said this is the third time somebody has desecrated their staff. And by the way, wow. the spokesperson that they speak for the people, her name was Mike Ella. Mike Ella, same thing. The micro frequency is talking to me, right? Mm. So, what's interesting about it, though, right? When we find out this town in Duluth, Minnesota, we doing a ceremony on the Eagle Sunday, five, six hundred miles away, up, 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 the, up, the, up, up in the north. They doing a ceremony to resurrect the Eagle, right? Mm-hmm. But the lady who we saw back in March that told us it was cool to come through to her sweat lodge, how about she was from Duluth, Minnesota. So so, so these correspondences keep popping up in our awareness every time we getting down. But what's even more crazy, we had planned the, the, the fall equinox a couple weeks before the summer solstice, and we said we're going to St. Louis this time to activate the Ohio and the Mississippi River where they meet. Now, in, 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 in the southern part of my state, because I'm from Chicago down in Cairo, right, where these two where these two waters come together and merge, right, mm-hmm. we said we're going to St. Louis two weeks before. We got it up on the website right now. We're going, we're going to St. Louis, for, you know, uh, 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 fall equinox. How about the county? When they was doing the resurrection for the eagle and the staff in Duluth, the same place where we met the lady in March, was from and said we can come to her sweat lodge. How about the county is called St. Louis County, where we hmm. going in the in the fall? See, man, this how God worked, man. This is one of the ways that God worked through showing you y'all is on this shit. Y'all own this shit. Y'all, every step that we taking is a divine step, man, to bring forth change down here collectively because. If it's cool to be on your personal spiritual thing, that's great. But if you're talking spirituality in the context that we do, in the zodiacal frequency, you're dealing with a 12 house function, which is everybody is involved. See what I'm saying? So what we're, what we're saying is we're here 
to take care of the bigger issues at hand and not knocking nobody on their own personal spiritual thing because that's great. But as far as changing the dynamic in the faith, and it's a quote that Elvis Levi said. He said that it is a force that exists that is stronger than steam, and any man that learns how to manipulate it will turn this world upside down. And I am here to say that we are inside of that current right now. Right now. There's no doubt about it. No doubt about it. Also, I want to make mention of the fact of the Mau Mau in Kenya. Um, they also use their magic along with um, the physical apparatus of war. Um, so, yes, they go hand in hand when it comes time um, in order to get down. Um, like you said, that's shown up in Haiti. That's shown in Jamaica. That is um, with the Maroons. That is shown um, throughout all indigenous tribes. You know what I'm saying? Um, those particularly that survived such as the Mau Mau and the Haitians and the Maroons. Um, so there's no doubt about that. Um, let's go to this line here in order to see um, what questions we have. Hold on. We got area code 843. Area code 843, you're on the line. Greetings. How you doing? Greetings. <clears throat> Greetings, bro. How you doing tonight, bro? Uh, my name is Eddie Carolina, South Carolina. All right. I just wanted to ask a question in reference to uh, the Lions Gate. I heard a few people talking about that, something pertaining to Leo and the Sun. Are you brothers familiar with that? Absolutely. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yes, brother. Um, you had a question. There's a gateway in which that is open up, in which that energy is coming from um, the Lion, um, you know, um, astrologically. So that's what you're referring to? Yes, Noble. Mm-hmm. Okay. okay. Yes, that's, yeah. is, is that uh, uh, something pertaining to uh, energy that we could uh, draw into ourselves? Or, yeah, you know, yeah. I, absolutely. Yes, absolutely. Def- definitely. definitely. No the master grip. The master right, grip. That, right, that is... Um, Masonic lore also. Right, that's black energy, brother. You know, that's um, that's that dark matter in which that is coming through that particular constellation. And, um, of course, it's melanated beings, you know, that's our job is to absorb energy. That's what our melanocytes do. We absorb all frequencies, sound waves, sunlight, sun rays, radar, music, etc. We absorb it all. You know what I'm saying? We are walking, absorbing, transmitting energy source, a battery. You know what I'm saying? In which that's supposed to be super conductive. You know what I'm saying? Hence, like Superman. You know, you see this new um, Man of Steel movie, you'll see him um, absorbing um, again, his power from the sun. Well, that's you. That's why they made his suit darker. Now his um, suit is dark, um, dark, real dark blue, damn near black. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. black and red now, as compared to um, the old Superman of you seen in the comic books or the old Superman on TV or whatever, um, with the real light blue and red. You know what I'm saying? They done turned it to damn near melanin on him, just like they did with um, Spider Man when he got his, um, you know, his melanin suit, and you see how he changed up. He started pimp walking. He started checking out the ladies, and they started checking them out, you know, and all those types of things. It shows you that, yo, melanin is in the, um is definitely in effect. It's loud. It's loud. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Wow. All right, I esteem and appreciate that, brother. Um, who, 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 that was you, Arlene, that was just speaking? Yeah, that was me, I. I esteem you. How about your co-host or guest? Um, you got anything to add to that, brother? Yeah, yeah I mean, that I mean, wasn't enough. I, that's, yeah, yeah, no, no. I mean, that's what it is, you know. But the way you, I think, the way you personalize that, man, is people got to become. Uh, I don't necessarily say you have to, but if you want to, um, figure out the time that Leo is rising, man, when that constellation is coming up above your head. So what we got to do is square this whole thing off like we do in the lodge. So figure out when that constellation is rising. And then on the east, you know what I'm saying? And then figure out when it's going to be at the high point of the day, when it's going to be in the south, and then figure out when that constellation is raw, I mean, setting, because now you've got three different visible stations um, of activity in which you can now start to personalize this energy. If you want to go outside, stand asshole naked with a damn lion mask on your face and, and start acting like a lion because you see the lion <laughs> constellation, it ain't going to get no better and realer than that. Because exactly. you're actually now exactly. what you're doing is you're making an interaction. There is a there is an even exchange of conscious energy from physical to spiritual. 
So exactly. figure out when that time is, is, is right there and then do your mojo. Exactly. That's what and the Masons call. Paul. That's what the Masons call the lion paw. But the right. lion's grip. The master grip. It was the strongest right. grip. The master grip. It was the strongest grip. That's right. Because the strong the, the son of that is strongest and the and the, the sign of Leo. That's right. That's when Hercules, right. when he wrestled the lion, when he killed the lion, that means he has passed the, the, the zodiac sign of, of Leo. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yes, sir. I see. I see. And we had another correspondence to that with, with, with the lion mask. No, I don't know if you want me to share because some stuff be a little, you know, graphic. But we got one that we, we promise we ain't going to share publicly. But no. if, if you know if you want to build on that or no, man. Nah, man, I hold it. Look, man, I got an eighth house selling, so I, I told, I don't know if it was a brother or sister in the chat, you know, it was like, oh, that's messed up, we here, we want to get it. And I'm like, well, you got to get certain checkpoints because you don't know who is who and everything. Like, like I think it was the Minister Farrakhan, like, truth out of season can get somebody hurt. And I've seen plenty of people who study information that's not grounded, they ask become crazy and cannot function in their regular households and shit because, they do not know how to decipher all of the information from me, Eileen. It's so much information. And if you're not disciplined enough, this shit can drive you crazy. It can. You see what I'm saying? So there has yeah. to be certain checks and balances. So I'm the one. I'll reveal. You get Gemini. That's him. He'll tell, he'll tell you every damn thing. Me, I got an ace house. Tell him, come knock on the door, and your knock better be a damn knock that I know how to motherfucker respond to, and we can bust it up on certain things. You know what I'm saying? So... We ain't going to get into everything, you know what I'm saying, because we gave y'all a lot far as correspondences that you can check for yourself and verify that. And if it's for you, you'll get up with us. We'll make it happen. Indeed. Great, exactly. appreciate you for calling and I'm, and I'm asking those questions. You had any other questions you want to talk about or get into? No, nah, I just wanted to also say that, um, you know, what you brothers are doing is definitely uh, – right on time, but just like the brother was just saying, uh, there's a lot of chaos energy that's coming right now, and a lot of people don't understand what's going on, like the brother said, if they're not grounded and not breathing properly, mm-hmm. you know, a lot of people yeah. are going to be very, very confused. There's definitely going to be a lot of derision in households and things of that nature, and if people don't fall back and just give time time, you know, it's definitely going to be a lot of problems and complications right now, because uh, a lot of this energy is changing, and it really is time for us to start uh, to raise up, appreciate, and love and adore our women because, you know, the substrate that we dwell on is feminine energy, you know. Exactly. So oh, we need to acknowledge all these things. It's like, yeah. that's right. Hey, that's, that's, that's absolutely right. And it's funny you mentioned that because I'm on tomorrow, Thursday night, over on our channel uh, on the Blog Talk, man, where I'm going to be discussing that, that principle right there, not the way that it's been discussed in previous conversations of, of these past couple of years, about the woman, but I'm going to go in and show how she is a spiritual protector here and how she will keep you from out of prison slash jail. And I'm going to break it down using this Venus principle. It's going to be real serious. That's right. Wow. How, about, how about this 13? This 13 Man, is number four. It's, it's 13? Is that the number of the woman also? I, was, I heard that. I, I, I was, I, yeah, I'll, I'll say so, man. But one thing I like to get people uh, introduced to is in Hebrew, there's a word called aked, which equals 13, and it means unity. And when we look at the uh, current tree of life system that we have, when you add up the right side of the tree, the masculine side of the tree, he equals 13, she equals 16. So it's funny that the word... Uh, for unity equals 13, man side of the tree is 13, and also um, the word love, you understand what I'm saying, is, is, is the same roots in all of this. So to me, 13, it never went to Ophethius, 13 meant serious. And I know that the government or Benjamin ben Bay, Benjamin Banneker set it up that way. Uh, I got the pictures that I got from the Masonic Museum. That famous picture y'all see of Benjamin Banneker? Giving George Ellicott, Joe, I mean Andrew uh, Ellicott and um, George Washington the mat, and, and Washington and Benjamin Banneker are dressed in the same attire. That picture comes directly from me going inside of the Masonic uh, uh, Lodge downtown in Philadelphia, European Lodge, and they had that as the first picture when you go down the hallway to go into the museum. It's no longer there, but it used to be there. But anyway. Um, when you get into the science of 13 stars and strike 13 colonies, we know that July 4th 
um, the sun is approximately 13 degrees cancer. And exactly. 13 degrees cancer is serious. You see what I'm yeah. saying? The star is serious. Right. So in this particular case, 13 to me was never about Ophethius because I don't ever find 13 in the Zodiac. It's always a science of 12. You become the 13th one once you activate it, which once you activate right. the 12. That's why 12 inches on a ruler. A ruler. Think about that. Why the term ruler? So 13 is feminine, but 13 is also talking about the unification because it's showing us, Kabbalistic-wise, um, that the masculine side is 13 as well. You see what I'm saying? And 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 when you're dealing with this whole moon science of 13, it's never 13 full moons and 13 new moons in the, in the solar year. It's a 12-13 ratio. It's either 12 new and 13 full, or 13 or 13 new and 12 full. It's always a 12-13 ratio. And the moon is reflecting the light of the sun, so therefore it's a balance. So this 13 is talking about the unification of serious, which literally the sun serious of serious consciousness for both of us. And the way that we really change the paradigm is we need a group of women to do ritual on this certain spot. Once y'all give the cosmic cry, and, 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 and I really want to tell y'all, like, like just to, like, if y'all ain't married to somebody, like, if you ain't married, like, don't give nobody no place. Shut everything down. Shut the vagina down for a minute until the black man is forced to motherfucker come up with a national agenda to deal with this shit. And then he has earned his rights in between the heaven. In between the legs, man, for real, for real. Uh, but we, we we make change when the women start to hold us accountable and make the cosmic cry. Believe that. Islam. Yeah, it's that's a painful more. thought. That's a painful thought. But I, I definitely can identify what you're saying because, you know, we are we are that tuning fork and we are that supreme one. But without that universal energy, that earth energy of that woman, yeah. You know, just like in a home, the woman controls the home. The woman makes the laws of the home, and the man just makes sure that those laws are handled, you know, abided by. You know, without that woman being supreme, man, there's always going to be conflicts. We always will be under this European dogma and whatnot because, you know, she basically got to set that tone, set that rhythm and whatnot, just like the cycles of a feminine energy, you know. You know, those five days that she's in a cycle, man, that's a holy time. So all things should be, set, you know, shut down, such as now, just like you're saying. I, I say, I say, I supreme you, and I salute you on that, definitely. Indeed, Even though it is a painful thought. No no pearly oh, yeah. gates, though, brother? No <laughs> pearly <laughs> gates? No pearly gates until we pull out the swords out here. <laughs> no, no pearly right. gates. Right. Appreciate you. We got area code eight three two. Area code eight three two. You on the line? Uh, peace, 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 peace. Uh, yes, yes, sir. Uh, I was just uh, just trying to kind of in the middle part of what you were saying. Uh, I wanted to just make an announcement. If that's okay, is that okay? Uh, yes. In regards to basically what we, we what you're discussing in terms of uh, uh, self empowerment, essentially is what you are speaking about, correct? Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, I heard the brother speak about uh, the solar, the moon, uh, sun energy, and the moon energy uh, working together to form what uh, is called, I guess, the immortal fetus. Or giving birth mm-hmm. to uh is that correct? Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Mm-hmm. Okay, okay, yes sir, yes sir. Okay. Well, this is what I want to share with you. Uh, I offer a, a an initiation program into uh what's called Tanaga the line. The initiation level Tanaga line, which is a science of of uh, of spiritual power or inner power or empty force. Uh it's a twenty one day initiation and within that time, you utilize the energies of the sun and the moon mm-hmm. that are alchemy, alchemized in water. In other words, through a special alchemy process, we take the energy from the sun and energy from the moon, put it with intention in water, mm-hmm. along with sea salt, and charge it. And for 21 days, with a special initiation process, all the energy centers, all the chakras will be un- unblocked. Uh, the energy centers will be uh, 
there will be no stagnation within the energy centers. Uh, I'm sorry, the energy channels. Um, you will have uh, your crown chakra will be open within seven days. As a matter of fact, I have three graduates that are about to uh, complete their 21-day initiation, and they have testimonies that they can attest to of its effectiveness. Uh, also, prior to that, we had three other students last year uh, that went through the initiation process, and they can also testify to the effectiveness of the initiation and it taking place within 21 days. Uh, it is a misconception that it takes several lifetimes. There's a secret that has not been publicly known. As a matter of fact, Tanakh Zalam is a science that goes back to uh, an ancient comedic papyrus that was written mm -hmm. about 4,000 B.C. So Tanakh Zalam, even though it's a Javanese term, it has comedic roots. And in, the Indonesians will tell you that it has comedic roots because they know mm -hmm. exactly where the papyrus is. It's a papy I believe the Dutch or the French had it. So... Uh, so it's not very well known amongst the uh, English or the, or the Americans. Uh, but somehow the, the Indonesians got uh, a, a hold of it. Uh, but this, this information was kept secret for quite some time. Uh, however, that's what we have, and uh, uh, we're going to continue this process, hopefully uh, bringing in more people. Now, the benefit of this is being able to control your existence. Brother was sharing about how uh, 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 the so-called coincidences that are not actually coincidences. Well, we have a process what we call manifesting meditation, where we are able to take an idea or influence the outcome of at a personal level or at a national level. Now, now, usually what happens is is you just lend energy to a, to a current of energy that's already in motion, and by lending energy to that current that's already in motion, it sort of speeds it up. I'll give you an example. Last year when Trayvon Martin was killed, there was another incident prior to that in Philadelphia where uh, a brother... Uh, 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 I'm sorry, I believe it was the brother, no, it was the sister that was also injured uh, by the police. Well, this wasn't uh, Trayvon, he wasn't injured, injured by the police. So what we had decided to do, that sort of uh, kicked me and another brother off that has this information as well. So we did a test. We created a current of energy to manifest an individual that could possibly deal with uh, these crooked cops. And within six months, you hear about Christopher Dorn. Now, we're not saying that we caused that, but what we are saying is that when you have a group of people that are energetically balanced, a large group of people that are energetically balanced, you can influence or direct thought patterns. And that's the truth, brother. And that's the truth, Sir, brother. I mean... I mean, I don't know if you ever heard of Simeon Toko from out of Angola. I mean, if you get the article, The Emergence of African Avatars and the Secret of Fatima, um, it was in Nexus Magazine. Shit, he unleashed a whole army, you know what I'm saying, of cherubims and seraphims that appeared and stood before the Belgian colonial army. You know what I'm saying? There was thousands of very yes, so-called men about the, you know, about the size of dwarfs. You know, actually, you know, who we refer to as the pygmies or the Twa people. You know what I'm saying? Yes, and one of them, yes, and um, people witnessed one of them, you know, lifting and flipping over a five-ton truck with one arm. You know what I'm yes, saying? Sir. Yes, sir. And yes, sir. They defeat, and they defeated a whole damn army with just a thousand of these, um, you know, small black angels, as we would say. You know, so, yeah. I mean, <laughs> no doubt, the thoughts, the mind is the most powerful thing, even within the Yoruba, um, Yoruba traditions, um, out of you, you hear about Oladumare, you hear about Obatala, Emiya, Oshun, Ogun, Oya, um, um, Ishu, Elegba. You hear about all these things, but then they tell you the most powerful is Ori. Ori is your mind. Right. Yes. Yes. Now, now I'm gonna tell you this as well. We have at the institute 
the we have over a hundred. Well, I, I don't want to get too far into that, but we have what you were talking about in terms of magic. What you may, what you said that many of our people think that doesn't exist. Well, there's actually well, uh, I, I you know for 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 sense of reasons we don't want to go too far into that. But what you just stated, we call them kudum. Right. There's a there's there, there's a yes yeah, sir, you know about the Kadoom. Yes sir, so 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 when you have have mastered Tanaga the line, you can manifest a Kadoom or an army right. of Kadoom. Right. Uh Kadoom experience. There's a eleven day we have the rituals for the Kadoom. Kadomic magic. We have the we have the and these are not these, you know, these are real initiation ceremonies where you actually feel the energy. You actually feel it. You know, like I said, I have uh, some testimonials. These they're about to complete their 21 day, and uh, they're ready. I have one talk show that we're going to go on, and they're going to be in the confirming uh, the efficiency of this initiation. Well, we would like for you to bring them on to um to here too, brothers. So I mean, don't bypass. Okay, okay yeah, hey, you know. And um, drop this yes, information. Exactly. Okay, because we're offering this to all of our people. I want to ask one yes, question. Hey, hey, brother, the call. Uh, we, I would like you to email me so so we can build a little further, man, because it, it sounds like you got a, a, a lot to offer, and it's in conjunction yes, with what we're talking about, man. So I want to give you my email address and so okay, we can build well, further, man. Me. Now, yes, sir. Let me, because that's the reason why I called, brother, is because... Uh, 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 we decided to move full force with this information. You know, we have an entire system. Matter of fact, I can take a person, uh, and then after the 21 days, I could have you. Well, just 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 put it like you know, I it, it even brought on a fantastic. But I can have you demonstrate an empty force. And possibly, you know, at least long distance healing in probably two to three months. That's how fast this system is. Wow. And we also use we also use uh, rare earth materials that are designed uh, uh, sort of like what they use in organ batteries. Well, we have a uh, we use a material that that is able to magnify your energy field. So it doesn't take you 15 to 20 years to master this or to develop enough chi. No, we're going to show you how to double, triple, and quadruple your energy within a very short period of time safely without any dangers. Okay. So, okay, I get your information, brother. Okay. Right, Chu, that's J-U. You, you ready? Is J-U. Yeah. Yes. Eleven the word as E L E V E N and eleven the number one one at gmail dot com. So you should have something that reads Jew eleven eleven at gmail dot com. Eleven the word and eleven the number at gmail dot com. Okay. Okay. Yes, sir. Any name? Uh, just well, I just I just uh give you my name. You can correspond back that way. I'll do that in a right. in, give me about thirty minutes and I'll do that, brother. I'll send an information right. to you. All right. We'll and then, uh, that. Okay, uh, well, uh, this is my number. If brother wanted to speak with me uh, later on, because I said we have some testimonials. They're, I mean, they're they're happy, and they will attest. Right. Also, to everything right, I just also said. write me too, brother, at my um, at my um, Gmail, Dr. Alim L. Bay, um, at Gmail dot com. So D R A L I M um, E L B E Y at Gmail dot com. Okay, yes, sir. Yes, sir. I would definitely do that. Yes, sir. And thank you, brothers. Uh, we'll be speaking Appreciate soon. You. Thank you, bro. No problem. No thank you, sir. Right. Appreciate problem. it. Peace. All right. We got Peace. another call. Area code 845. Area code 845. You're on the line. Hey, hey how y'all doing? How you doing, Hey, this is Kenito. Great. Hey, what up? Hey, Juju. How y'all doing? We're good. I'm just calling just to show my love and support, and I can attest that these brothers are the truth. Um, I personally went on the summer solstice trip and had some remarkable correspondences. I mean, 
I mean, it's incredible. So what these brothers are doing, I put my stamp of approval on. So I'm just calling in to show my support. Speaking of the women, and speaking of the women, the group of women that were at the trip, the last trip that um, we went on, Mm -hmm. I mean, we on it. I mean, it was a group of gangster women, so... It's not just the brothers in the priesthood. The sisters is doing their thing, too. Yeah. The sisters are and part of the priesthood, and I can speak on my behalf. That's right. Yo, bro, yeah. Look, the brothers were asleep, yeah. and the sisters was in the graveyard putting work in. Real talk. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Right. Absolutely. <laughs> so we here. We here. Appreciate yeah, you, goddess. We got a chance to go to Mexico, to um, Cancun um, area, and we got a chance to go to Cozumel, in which that uh, uh-huh. we did right beside the pyramid um, for the um, spring um, equinox. And, um, mm-hmm. you know, def- some um, things came about in that. You know what I'm saying? Definitely the correlations is um, beautiful there. You know, we had the same type of correlations as far as that is concerned, you know, with the manifestations and also with um, everything I'm um, dealing with, um I guess certain events in which that took place. I won't go into it right now, but this is your time in order to shine and get the information out. Um, give everyone the Blog Talk Radio Show um, number and also where they can contact you all at and everything. Yeah, indeed, man. Uh, blog Talk Radio forward slash Ampu A N as in uh, Nancy P as in Paul U as an umbrella Ampu Astrology. I'm up on Sunday. Sunday mornings at 11 a.m. It's called Ampu Live. You can visit the website, myastrologycoach.com, join the mailing list, because everything we do, of course, we try to send out by email correspondent. On Mondays, we've got the Moonlight Hour. Tuesday, we got a show called Ladies Night. Wednesday is the best of the best using um, bioenergetic synchronization uh, technique, how to heal yourself. Basically, um phenomenal elder named Dr. G. Lee is um, um, showing, teaching people that particular technique. And then on um, Thursdays, man, Minister Jew was up called Jew's Altar. So Minister Jew was up tomorrow night on his first show coming out, um, doing his thing. So definitely come out and support that. The call-in number for our blog talk show is 818-369-0368. But the best thing to do always, man, is visit myastrologycoach.com. Click on the events tab. You're going to see a calendar. And you can always see what's going on on our calendar. Click on the actual event in the calendar so it can take you to the direct link so you can get more information. And that's how you can stay abreast with us. So myastrologycoach.com. All right, all right. Yeah. And any closing remarks before we get over here? Yes, go ahead, brother. Okay. You going in and out? Go, 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 yeah, go ahead, Drew. Go ahead. Oh, I was going to say, yeah, man. Visit us also at hiphopastrology.com where the stars meet the stars, man. We going in on the celestial science, showing you how it corresponds with the people that we view as stars today in this reality, reality showing you how nobody's exempt from the heavens up above, man, and how this energy corresponds with them and their physical dynamic. They are here in this matrix, man. So we got some banging articles over there. We ain't been over there in a little while, but we got some stuff over there, good articles for you to read, man, to kind of get to understand it. And if you stay over there long enough, anybody that's a beginner to astrology, you might be able to understand and pick up some of the concepts and terms. And it's interesting reading because these are people who have a lot of things going on in the spotlight. So, you know, uh, it's, it's phenomenal, phenomenal, phenomenal webs, man. And, and one last thing before we go, I want y'all to visit the website and visit the membership tab over there where we have a program called um, the Toel Love Fund, man. It's, you know, we go, we go, we go upstairs on a lot of stuff, man, and take it to uh, the extra realms and the other worlds and dimensions, man, because we the priesthood, that's what we do. But we bring it back down here to earth, man, where we show our, our, our affection for humanity, man. We don't we, 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 we don't preach that humanity doesn't have its place, man. So we have a program that's been running for a year now. I'm happy about it, man. It's, it's a phenomenal program. People donate $13 a month. And we pay people's bills with that money. In a year's time, we pay 70 bills. That's right. And that's real talk. It's actually been almost, yeah. almost been 18 months to be exact. But, uh, um, right. Yeah. Yeah. A year and a half, $13 a month, cash the pot out. Four people get their bills paid. It's in order that you sign up on. 
And uh, you know, it's just it's just it's just a humanitarian thing to do. So it's actually six. It's actually six people now. We bumped it up to six people because we had enough people participating where we could spread it out with more people where they get a substantial amount. It be it, it range anywhere from like ninety to one hundred and thirty dollars. We cash it out, man. We pay people's light bills, gas bills, uh, you know, uh, cable bills, whatever they got coming up. If they want us to pay it, they'll, tra- they'll give us the information and we'll go handle it for them or we'll dump the money in their PayPal account if they got one and they can do whatever they want to do with it. But it's been running, like you said, now for a year and a half, man, and uh, it never fails. People will be like, man, it was right on time. You know what I mean? And what it is, it is just a way to show how we can put things together and trust one another to facilitate righteous things. And we're trying to show people that it ain't always got to be the petty shit, man. Like, we could do it right, and we've been doing it mm-hmm. right, man. So we got 70 people, man. Cool. They got their bills paid. We got the testimonials on the website. In fact, anybody that's listening to this on the, in the Love Fund, remember, check your emails. We got a conference call this Sunday about the fund. So make sure y'all check y'all email because I sent it out a couple weeks ago. And we join in Sunday to talk about how we can expand the fund and do some different things with it. So, shout out to the Toil Love Fund members, man. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. Anybody yeah. can make that Equinox trip, man. Fall Equinox, September 20th through 23rd on the website on the events tab, man. We're going to the large, the spot that we're going to has a base that's 300 feet bigger than the Great Pyramids in Egypt, getting it in right. over here in uh-huh. America. All uh-huh. right. So, you know, get with us, man. Get with us. All right. Brother L, you got any closing remarks, anything you want to ask the guests? Yes, brother. It was very, very enlightening talking to you, brothers, brother, because I'm, I, I'm myself a student of cosmology and uh, uh, dealing with more science and uh, what you said about how they, the military uh, and the Navy and all use that uh, as warfare. And mm-hmm. you were right on time with that, right on hit with it, brother. Uh, I have a... a uh, I really appreciate you, brothers. Yes, sir. I'm about to talk to you again you, real, real soon. Yeah, absolutely, bro. We definitely appreciate you. We thank you, Aileen, for the opportunity as well, man. Oh, no doubt. I, you know what I'm saying? We definitely got to get you all on, have you all on again, you know, because y'all dropped it, and um, I, know, I know the audience loved it, you know what I'm saying? So yes. they were requesting you back. So, um, you know, Brother Ample, Brother Juju, you know what I'm saying? We'd love to have y'all back whenever y'all definitely can make it back. So, you know, just hit us up, and uh, we can definitely make that happen again. Indeed, yeah. man. That's what it is, man. Yeah. Right. All right. All right. Well, yeah, we peace No doubt. Yeah, I'll check. Peace, y'all. Peace, y'all. First of all, all the radio, finally, finally, we are on the air. No doubt. There's always going to be somebody in the building on First World Order Radio. We get on into some of that order consciousness tonight. First World Order Radio every Wednesday, 8 p.m. We got to talk about what is taking place on the planet. There's always going to be somebody in the building on First World Order Radio. First, we need to let you know we're going to be doing more shows giving out more information on Wednesdays. Wednesday is 8 o'clock. We are now going to make this is the hottest day of the week. Proceeding in others in time, order, and importance, the most prominent parts, voices, or instruments. Earthly state of human concerns in existence, an indefinite multitude, quantity, or distance. System regulates to bring about specifics in the group based on value and natural characteristics. Current radiates electromagnetistics of sound through the air, same as your thoughts transmits it. Proceeding in others in time, order, importance, the most prominent parts, voices, or instruments. Earthly state of human concerns in existence, an indefinite multitude, quantity, or distance. System regulates to bring about specifics in the group based on value and natural characteristics. Current radiates electromagnetistics of sound through the air, same as your thoughts transmits it. You need to understand how magical this, uh, something like this every Wednesday can become. So you need to start uh, getting your calendar right, get your schedule, your schedule right. You need to know our intentions straight out. All right, so I mean, these clues are given. 
throughout the various languages was to piece the puzzle of this ancient mystery school back together again. And what we plan on doing, both of us, is bringing y'all some surefire dynamite. We're gonna take this level up a notch. We're gonna have stuff to do here. This is not just gonna be about philosophies and theories, shit that works.